Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, retired meteorologist with this tropical weather update for Saturday, September 24th. The tropics are extremely busy today with four named storms. We got Fiona, Gaston, Hermine, and the storm of interest, Ian. Ian is expected to continue to intensify today as it moves over the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea and then expected to undergo rapid intensification as it moves into the rich warm waters of the southeast Gulf of Mexico early next week with the potential of reaching major hurricane strength. That's 115 miles per hour or greater. And that could be occurring on Tuesday into Wednesday. And this will be off the southwest coast of the Florida Peninsula. The storm could affect our area of southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina Thursday and Friday coming up. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look right now. This is the uh, broad satellite view. There is tropical system Fiona. It's extra tropical right now over the upper portions of the Atlantic Canadian provinces at the moment. Uh, still has hurricane force winds there. Over here, there you have Gaston, which is going to be moving in this direction, but then dissipate. And here you have the new tropical system, Hermine, uh, which will be moving to the west-northwest and then dissipating. So none of these are of any concern to us right now. Uh, or at, at ever. A couple of tropical waves coming off the African coast and off the African coast, but uh, these are not showing any threat so far. I'm not expecting much out of those. But, and this system here is Tropical Storm Ian. And zooming in on this, there you can see uh, the storm is getting a little bit better organized at this time as it's moving across these warm waters in the Central Caribbean Sea. Now, let's go into the um, color enhanced uh, infrared view and there you can see the convection is continuing to develop these dark areas of red uh, with little caps of white here indicating very cold cloud top temperatures which indicates that the storm is getting better organized and less shear now is beginning to uh, uh, flow over this uh, region as the shear abates this will cause the storm to continue to intensify there's Jamaica right there this will not affect Puerto Rico over here uh, this storm is too far away from them so they don't have to worry about this they got enough to worry about as it is right now but we need to worry about this uh, this is tropical system uh, Ian soon to become Hurricane Ian let's take a look at uh, one of the issues right now and this is the um, the water temperature. This is from the uh, Short-Term Prediction Research and Transition Center of NASA and it shows the composite water temperatures ac across the Gulf of Mexico into the Caribbean Sea and uh, well red obviously indicates hot. Uh, the area over here where the storm is eventually going to be moving into has a water temperature around 30 degrees Celsius or about 88-87 degrees Fahrenheit it's almost bath water but over here as the storm moves into the uh, southeastern Gulf of Mexico this water temperature off the coast of Florida is almost 90 degrees upper 80s to low 90s so that's some very warm water you think about water temperature as fuel the higher the uh, water temperature the higher the octane and that basically is what's happening here so this has a tremendous amount of energy to work with once it gets there so let's take a look at the uh, the models right now. And first of all, the uh, global forecast system, uh, a new run is coming in right now, but I'm looking at the uh, early morning run uh, that came in around two or three o'clock in the morning. And uh, actually it was available by 6.30, but anyway, there it is moving into the Straits of the Yucatan, crossing into the Gulf of Mexico, and then moving up to the north and then coming in across the uh, the big bend area of Florida. That's the uh, the, the uh, GFS forecast uh, for this. And the time date on this, right at this point here, is um, two o'clock on Friday afternoon coming up. Uh, well, let's take a look at another model. Uh, this one just arrived. Uh, it's the um, um, early, it's the morning run, the 12 Zulu run of the German model and uh, it shows the uh, storm uh, picking up strength uh, start from the beginning here there it is and it's picking up strength as it goes over that warm water again goes right across uh, the western tip of cuba a little bit further east than the gfs and then moves it up into the area where that water temperature is near 90 degrees and it has it really ramping up to a very strong hurricane 
And there it goes moving northward up to the area just north of Tampa, Florida around sunset on Thursday and then continues to move upward. And here it is on Friday early in the morning, around two o'clock in the morning, showing very strong conditions moving into the coast of Georgia and South Carolina as the storm center itself is now expected to be over the northern portions of Florida. This is just a computer model, keep in mind. But it brings the system up just to the west of the coastal areas of Georgia and South Carolina. The east side of the storm, this side is always known as the bad side of the storm. So uh, yeah, this is not looking good. Let's take a look at the Canadian models. Let's put this back to the beginning. The Canadian model, let's see the new runs coming in. Let's go to the last run last run and there we have it right here again moving across uh, this one is just a little bit further west not I mean further east not much just a couple of miles uh, than the icon a little bit further east than from the uh, GFS but still uh, it's moving up into that eastern Gulf of Mexico over those very warm waters and then moves back up north of the Big Bend of Florida around Apalachicola and then uh, on the western side of Georgia, the eastern side of Alabama. Again, it puts us on the east side of the storm and this is uh, sunset on Friday. So this one's a little bit slower in um, forward speed, but there you can see tremendous amount of uh, rain and high winds moving into coastal Georgia and South Carolina on uh, Thursday and Friday. Let's take a look at the European model, the, the ECMWF, the European Center for Media Range Weather Forecast. And uh, let's go to the Zero Zulu Saturday run uh, last night and uh, take a look. And it has it, again, a little bit more east than the GFS and the ICON and the Canadian model. And it has it going right around the Fort Myers, Florida area. That's where the water temperature is right around 90 degrees. Anyway, uh, continues to move it northward now into uh, Florida, just south of Tampa, making landfall there uh, on uh, Wednesday night at sunset, and then pushes it northward across the northeast portions of Florida, uh, right around the Jacksonville, um, Florida area by uh, two o'clock on Friday morning. And there you can see it's pre producing considerable amount of uh, conditions of uh, severe weather conditions across eastern Georgia and eastern and coastal South Carolina. Uh, this would be a horrible position for us to be in with this particular storm. So with that being said, let's take a look at the uh, forecast models uh, all put together. This is from the South Florida Water Management District and it's beginning to tighten up on this cluster. Um, Usually by day five or so, the, uh, the, the paths are diverging quite a bit, but they're converging more and more now toward this eastern portions of the Florida area, um, uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico into the western Florida area, then up into Georgia and the northwest South Carolina. Uh, let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center. Um, go to my website, savannapat.name, and just go down to the... Uh, Tropical Weather Outlook, go to the National Hurricane Center. There you can see all the storms ongoing right now. And I want to look at the forecast model for uh, Tropical System Ian, and uh, right here, and there you can see the uh, forecast map from the National Hurricane Center has this storm reaching major hurricane status, that is 100 knots or 115 miles an hour. Uh, as it crosses the western tip of Cuba and going into the south uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico off the southwest coast of Florida and then making landfall somewhere around 8 o'clock Thursday morning uh, right near the Tampa, right around or right near uh, north of Tampa, Florida and then uh, pushing it northward. So you know, this is something we're really, really going to have to keep an eye on uh, with this system here. There it is right now continuing to gain strength in those warm waters of the Caribbean. Well, it might be a good idea to start preparing for tropical storm or hurricane conditions in our area. Start by putting your hurricane plan in place and closely monitor the forecast updates by tuning into your local favorite television station and other reliable news sources and our local National Weather Service meteorologist from Charleston 
and Jacksonville for our southern counties. And monitor your local emergency management agency and heed to their advice. You can find me on my website of savannapat.name or my Weather and Nature Facebook page and on Twitter at Pat of Savannah. I have links to all of these in the description section below and you're invited to leave your comments in the comments section below below the description area. If you like this video, please hit the like button and even subscribe so that you'll be able to be notified whenever I upload new video. You can also catch me on my main YouTube channel, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. There I post videos from my large telescopes outside in the garden looking at the planets, colorful nebulae, and star clusters, and of course those distant galaxies. For example, last night I captured Saturn and Jupiter right outside from the Heavenly Backyard Garden. Well, thanks for watching. Keep an eye on E.ON, because this is definitely going to be a threat to the southeast United States, including southeast Georgia and southern South Carolina, later next week. See you later here on YouTube.